If you're like me, your home desktop PC is your domain. It's powerful, it's got all your files, your shortcuts are laid out perfectly, and you always feel comfortable. But then you have to take a trip out of town, space is at a premium, and you're forced to make a call. Do you bring your desktop or your two-year-old? Well, as cute as your desktop may be, if you have a toddler, the odds are excellent that the person who carried it around for nine months to make it will have some say in the matter. So out comes the laptop you haven't touched in the last six months. If you want to be connected in any way to the world, however unoptimized that experience might be. But is there a way that you could take that desktop experience with you? Well, yes, actually. Great question, viewer, by the way. There is, and it's pretty darn awesome. In this magical world of technology, we have a plethora of applications that allow you to control a computer remotely via another computer or even a mobile device, whether you're on site or off. But what is the best application to use? Well, if you're using Windows, there's actually a built-in option for Remote Desktop called Remote Desktop Connection, though it's only available with professional-grade editions or higher, and the security isn't the greatest thing ever. The main benefits of the integrated solution are that it allows for a high level of control, you can manage all your applications and transfer files between PCs with ease, and it doesn't require any additional software to set up. Some downsides, however, are that you can only connect from a Windows machine to a Windows machine using this software. None of that freaky deaky Mac Windows cross-platform nonsense going on. And while if you're connected within your local network, it's pretty easy, it's just a matter of enabling it on the host computer, configuring your settings so only computers that you control can access it remotely, and then typing in the name of the computer when you want a remote control and hit enter, it becomes a little more difficult when remoting in from the outside of your network as you'll have to manually open up some ports on your router. Full details on how to do that can be found at the Lifehacker link in the video description. But of course, there are also plenty of third-party solutions that fit the bill as well. If you're looking for an extremely simple option, then a program like TeamViewer has you covered. It takes minutes to set up an account, and you can even use it without an account if you prefer. You just need the connection ID and password from the computer that you're trying to access. You can use TeamViewer at no charge for personal use, the definition of which you can find on their website, and you can get full access to all your programs, share files, kind of slowly but it works, between your PCs, and switch between monitors if you have a multi-monitor setup, all within a very simple interface. And they even have a mobile app so you can access your home PC no matter where you are. TeamViewer hosting works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and you can get clients in those, and Android, iOS, and even Windows Phone. So much cross-platform love, man. There are other cross-platform options too, like LogMeIn, although LogMeIn now charges a subscription fee even for personal use, which pretty much takes it out of the running for very casual users. And then there are a ton of awesome solutions for Linux, like Putty, but they all accomplish pretty much the same goal. Accessing your home computer or your work computer from any other computer, allowing you to feel comfortable when surfing the web, creating a presentation, or doing whatever it is you want to do on a computer with only very short delays. Because yes, there's there's always a gotcha, isn't there? The quality of your streaming experience over the internet will be heavily dependent on your upload speed at your base station and download speed wherever your travels take you. With a great connection, I've been able to edit videos on a remote workstation, even play them back. But with a poor one, you can see delays as long as a second or more, making it quite difficult to enjoy. Speaking of things that are easier to enjoy when they don't have much delay, DDR4 memory, and more specifically, XPG Z1 DDR4 from A Data, the sponsor of today's video. This is the memory that we use in our DDR3 versus DDR4 apples to apples comparison video on my other channel, and the whole lineup is pretty darn spiffy. If you're looking for memory for your new LGA 2011 3 system with a 6 core or 8 core processor, it's available in speeds of up to 2800 megahertz with transfer speeds of up to 22 gigabytes per second. And does that while being more reliable and while consuming 20% less power than comparable DDR3 kits. So if you're looking for some ball and RAM to go with your ball and new CPU, check out ADATA's XPG Z1 series. Thanks to ADATA for sponsoring this episode of Fast as Possible. And thanks to you for watching. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment letting me know if you have suggestions for future Fast as Possibles. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to TechWiki for more videos just like this one.